We're talking about cell cycle in this video, and we're going to specifically be talking about mitosis, which is the division of the nucleus in a somatic cell. A somatic cell is a cell that is not a reproductive cell, and is just a cell of the body, like a skin cell or a liver cell, etc. So before we talk about the actual division of the nucleus, we need to first start talking about what the cell does to prepare for division. Before the cell divides, it is in a state called interphase. Interphase is the phase of cell cycle between divisions. And during interphase, the cell has to do something to get ready to divide and make sure that the division results in two identical cells replacing the original cell. In order to do that, it has to duplicate all of its genetic material so that each new cell gets a full complement of the genetic material necessary for that cell to exist and function as the original parent cell did. And those two cells that result are called identical daughter cells. We know from our uh, DNA and protein synthesis unit that the genetic information that we get from our parents is stored on a series of codes called DNA. The DNA in our bodies is, is organized into chromosomes. In a typical human somatic cell, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We have 23 from our mothers and 23 from our fathers, and each of those pairs codes for specific traits about ourselves, like hair color, eye color, height, whether or not we produce certain enzymes, etc. So we have 23 pairs. Again, our parents each get to donate a chromosome for our specific traits. So our, both our parents get a say in our hair color and our height, etc. We know that DNA is a double helix of genetic information, a series of codes that is a recipe to make all the proteins that we need for our cells to survive. We know that. We also know that DNA is coiled together and held together by histones and nucleosomes to form a structure called a chromosome. In a non-dividing cell, this is actually a chromosome during metaphase, so this is a chromosome while the cell is getting ready to divide. In a non-dividing cell, you would just see half of this, just one of these chromosomes, like that. And that's enough DNA for us to do what we need to do. However, if the cell is going to divide and produce two identical daughter cells that are identical to the original parent cell, we need to make sure that the DNA is doubled or replicated before division. And that takes place during a phase called interphase, which is the phase in between divisions of a cell. During interphase, the DNA of the cell has to double itself. It has to make a copy of itself or replicate. And it, it does this because an enzyme called DNA helicase will split the double helix so that the nucleotide bases that you see here that are hydrogen bonded to each other actually break their bonds and become separate individual strands, much like what you see in transcription of protein synthesis. However, instead of RNA polymerase, we have an enzyme called DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is an enzyme that'll allow DNA nucleotides, free DNA nucleotides, to come together and join up with the open strands of DNA created by unwinding the double helix from DNA helicase. When we let DNA nucleotides take that place, what happens is we end up with two identical strands of DNA. Because if these nucleotides were attached to these nucleotides, we know because of the base pairing that they can only attach to other nucleotide bases that are specific. So specific nucleotides will come down and attach to the place that was left by the other DNA strand. So what happens is you end up getting two identical new DNA double helices. 
this picture shows it a little bit closer so you can see that here A and T were bonded G and C were bonded here C and G were bonded T and A were bonded well if if this strand had to bond to A, G, C, and T for DNA, then the only free nucleotides from DNA that can attach to it now are the same exact ones that were there before. So what you're going to end up with is an identical copy. And you'll have two identical copies. So you replicate the DNA. So what you end up with is still 23 pairs of chromosomes. However, each chromosome now has two identical parts to it because the chromosome is really just the same single chromosome but now with double the amount of DNA that was, then was originally there. That means so that if these chromosomes split in half each one will have the full amount of DNA necessary for a, a normal cell. Imagine it like an Oreo cookie. It's got some vanilla cream in the middle and two chocolate cookies on the outside. An Oreo cookie with double stuff is still one cookie, but it has twice as much cream inside. A chromosome after DNA replication is like a chromosome with double stuff. So now that the DNA is replicated, we can see we have two sister chromatids of one big chromosome. So this whole thing is a chromosome. It has two halves that are identical to each other because they are identical strands of DNA. One is a copy of the other. So we call them sister chromatids. And we call them sister chromatids because they are identical to each other. This is important because we're going to eventually split these chromatids up. And each one of them is going to contribute to a whole new cell. And each of those cells needs to be identical to the parent cell and to each other. Otherwise the cells won't function the way they're supposed to. So how do we do that? We have four phases of mitosis. Mitosis is the actual dividing of the In the first phase of mitosis, the chromatin, which is the mass of genetic material in a cell, begins to condense and shorten into chromosomes and the nuclear envelope breaks down. All of the chromatin now shortened and condensed mass of chromosomes which all have sister chromatids bundle around the center of the cell and they begin to start to form spindle fibers from the centrioles of the cell those spindle fibers are going to eventually migrate to opposite ends of the cell uh, these spindle fibers are going to actually act as tracks that the chromatids can travel on so the chromatids can split from each other and get also get to opposite sides of the cell. But before that happens, what has to form is what's called a metaphase plate. During the second phase of mitosis called metaphase, all of the sister chromatids line up in the middle, like you see here. And you can see now that those, those spindle fibers are attached. They go to opposite ends of the pole and they're attached to the chromatids. They're actually attached to the middle of the chromatid called the centromere, which is surrounded by a protein called the kinetochore. And that's what the spindle fibers attach to. During the next phase, called anaphase, the spindle fibers actually pull the chromatids apart at the centromere, dividing them into two. So one set of sister chromatids heads towards one side of the cell, and the other set of sister chromatids head towards the other side of the cell. Now remember, each sister chromatid is identical to its other and each has the full amount of DNA for that chromosome. So when these masses of chromatids get to opposite sides of the cell, both sides of the cell will have the full amount of DNA for that cell to function. During the uh, anaphase, you'll see the cell begins to elongate a little bit. Now in the final phase of telophase, the chromatids have reached opposite ends and the cell membrane starts to pinch off down the middle in what's called a cleavage furrow. The cleaving of the cell is so that eventually the cell membrane can divide and split this into two whole new cells. 
So like this illustration shows, the cleavage furrow is going to pinch its way all the way down to the middle and pinch off this cell so that it's two new identical cells. Each has the full amount of DNA necessary in the chromatids. Each has a full set of organelles because during anaphase and telophase also you have what's called cytokinesis which is the doubling up and division of all of the cytoplasm. And then finally when this cleavage furrow gets down to the middle and meets, the cells separate and you have two new identical cells. Two cells are identical to each other. They each have tw 23 pairs of chromosomes if this is a human cell and they each have this, the same exact DNA as each other and as the parent cell that divided in the first place. So now you've replaced the cell and you've got two new fully functional identical cells. That is mitosis.